What's going on, friends? Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and with the release of the most recent issue of Dragon Plus, we got some more news about Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. More about a very specific, terrifying creature, and a little bit touching on the types of horror we can expect in Van Richten's Guide, as well as some interesting art we can take a look at. So I'm going to put a link to this in the description. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm curious to see if I ask. I usually don't, you know, beseech folks for likes but it does actually help push things around the algorithm. And I'm curious, I usually don't say that. I'm wondering if that drives the like number up at all. And then again, subscribe. Uh, if you like what I do here, help me raise those subscriber numbers. So anyway, here's the article. Um, and basically what they go on to talk about is they were trying to incorporate some sort of creature, folklore, they said fake lore, creepypasta, slender man, right? That kind of the modern culture of, you know, the internet creating creatures and things like this, like Slenderman. Uh, and they decided, how could we, what could we do? How could we make this a possibility? Um, and then they they kind of settled on what's, what's a true aspect of horror. And that's when the characters think that they're safe, then that's when things can become the worst. And they said, well, what's the scariest thing is, something that you don't know that's kind of happening around you. And they basically settled on, well, what if it was your equipment that was the, the monster, right? So they developed to this horrifying looking thing here, the bag man, which is essentially uh, a creature that lives inside a bag of holding um, and is just the worst, really. So um, it said, uh, you know, they said, how is this going to work? So it says a bag that attacks you at random is already pretty creepy. But what about the fact that you're literally transporting this monster with you wherever you go? Uh, like an evil parasite, it's committing atrocities while you and the party were asleep in the towns you're visiting. You might think you're following a murderer, but in reality, you're actually bringing the killer to the locations that you're going through. Then they bring up something here where they're talking about like could become interesting because the party might start accusing each other of being the ones that are causing this, right? There, there's things that could lead to this. Uh, you know, every time we show up in a town, it's after we arrive that these murders happen. I don't think that that's going to work the way they're describing. I think it sounds great in theory, uh, but horror and sort of deceptiveness are not really mainstays or aspects of um, Dungeons and Dragons. So I don't think it could work as well in this system as it could in other systems. Uh, but it will be interesting. I just also don't know if you could keep that sort of mystery alive because I feel like the players could very quickly figure out that, no, it's not one of us. And I don't know if you as the DM could kind of keep that veil there long enough that it isn't one of the party members. Um, if it comes up organically, it could be fun to deal with, but I don't think it'd be something that's prolonged. So uh, they said it should have a high stealth, right? Nothing's more disturbing than when there's something going on in the background. The players, the characters don't see it. Uh, and they leaned, said they'd leaned more into the lore of the Bag of Holding. Usually when you put a creature inside it, it doesn't last for very long. Uh, but they said they didn't want to just make it an undead creature. Uh, so they said they didn't want it to be a zombie because they're not really intimidating. So they said they used like, the concept of the Nightwalker. Maybe it has immunity to magic. Maybe it's an aberration, which I think it probably should be. Um, and yeah, they're trying to make it as terrifying as possible. And they said some of the best things are when the party thinks they know that it's something and they find out that it's something else. And what it actually is, is way worse than you originally thought. Uh, and then they kind of went on to showcase these little uh, icons or logos, they're calling them, that appear throughout uh, the book. And what I really like is it's sort of like a quick reference guide that you can see, oh, hey, what kind of horror is this? And they really touched on all of the main aspects of horror, right? We have primary horror categories, body horror, cosmic horror, dark fantasy horror, folk horror, ghost stories, and gothic horror, right? Uh, we've seen them like tease little bits on social media about, oh, this is about body horror. This is about cosmic horror. We're talking like Cthulhu-y stuff. We've got old school folklore, you know, legends and myths. And then we have gothic horror, like traditional Ravenloft. And then as well as secondary genres, uh, disaster slash survival horror, um, occult detective, which is an interesting one, a little bit different, psychological horror, and then the slasher slash monster concept, right? So, I mean, that last one, you've got like your 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 uh, your Mike Myers or your uh, your Jason Voorhees, where you have psychological horror that could be really interesting. 
I guess a cult detective, is that like supernatural maybe? Or, or, or you know, things of that nature? Uh, Dresden Files maybe? Um, I don't know. I, I think it's interesting. It looks like they really have covered just about every aspect of horror. I don't see anything uh, at first glance by reading through those that jumps out as me like, oh, you're clearly missing this type of horror. If there is one and you happen to think of it, let me know uh, in the comments what you think. Also, let me know what you think each one of those represents. Uh, and then they go on to just talk about how, um, you know, there's more about the bag of holding because it's so large. There's extra spaces. How could we mess around and use that? Um, and then how could the creature look as it grows over time? Um, I said they said, you know, the idea of contortionists started playing her mind, so we give it tall, lanky limbs. Imagine that it's horrible, uh, how it would look through its different stages of life. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be terrifying. They said that's only one of the several creatures included in Van Richten's guide. And they even have the art here to showcase the different gothic lineages included in there, right? The Dampier the Hexborn, and the Reborn. So here we can see the final art showing off a damp here. Uh, we have a Reborn here, very Frankenstein-esque here. And we have the Hexblood, sort of fey creatures, and we look at the final art, it looks maybe like it's a newly formed hag coven or something like that. So there you go, folks. Just a little bit of news regarding Van Richten's guide. Uh, again, it's about 20 days or so we'll have this in hand. You can expect the standard amount of coverage that you would expect from me. If I happen to get a copy early for one reason or another, I will do a live stream where I will try to answer as many of your questions as you may have. If not, you can expect coverage of all of the stuff you expect from Nerd Immersion, all the new things, uh, starting probably at around midnight on the 18th and rolling out until uh, all that coverage is complete. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.